Big Cap, Big Cap, Don Marino, heavy sombrero. He lack knowledge, I bet he a scarecrow. Some deadly a arrow. If it ring, get low, rider. And he go red. But we was never friends. So up the horn, I'm looking for your crib. You better let me in. Mask up, gloves on. I work in medicine. So up to deluxe apartment in disguise like the Jeffersons. So you got to get shot with the cannon I gotta do you, send a shot into you This is black love, brown pride Shaka Zulu meets Montezuma It wouldn't be Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Speaker and Language Show. And we have a special guest, somebody that I've always wanted to do work with um, for one of these, just because he's a historian. He's one of the best battle rap analysts I know in this culture. We have Tone Bro from Black Compass Media. How you doing? Yo, what up, man? Tone Bro, Black Compass Media. Big shout out to everybody that's out there, man. Nah, this is, uh, this is dope. I appreciate it. I definitely appreciate the coach for sure. Shout out to the whole team, man. Um, Nah, this is dope, man. I like the concept, I like what you're doing up here. You know what I'm saying? It's good to be here for sure. Um, oh, I always got to say, man, make sure you follow us, Black Compass BCM. Absolutely. It's that nature, you know what I mean? But nah, shout out to the people that came before me too, because like sync ups like this, is just good dialogue, you know what I mean? Like help see where people at. And then I think me and you got different perspectives on yeah. something. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, like I said, I, I think, um, you know, people people really going to rock with this one stuff. I'm yeah happy. yeah for sure and i and i it just it comes full circle right because i like the first time i seen you you was a part of angry fan radio you know what i'm saying so caps was the og in that regard you know what i'm saying and now you're playing the og for me you know what i'm saying like because like the same way that i've been watching caps for years i've been watching you for years you know just the way you break down stuff uh just being overall better rap historian like one of my one of my favorite uh, things that you did was interview Rex back in the day, just talking about some of his rhymes that he yeah. had. One of my favorite <laughs> interviews because you like you caught him on the street. You just yeah. broke, broke yeah. chop it up with him. It was just amazing, man. Like you, you, you play you play a tremendous role in bridging the gap between new era battle rap and like old era battle rap. And I just want to say thank you very much for being here. Uh, without further ado, we're gonna hop into this topic. Um, I couldn't get anybody else better than than you for this, <laughs> but we're doing top five smack dvd rounds when you think of smack dvd what's the first thing that comes to mind sir uh smack dvd first thing that comes to mind is the corner store right mm. needed a corner store this was digging the crates era. like let me get my bag real quick let me go ahead this. go ahead this is back when not just battle rap but hip-hop good hip-hop you had to seek out right this is when the things started to shift and things of that nature but there was a subculture of the streets that was still driving the energy you see what i'm saying people still respected the street energy like this is what this is what we talking about we don't care what's going on there was a point in my life where and one was so popular where it was like yo we rock with nba but we on this and one because that was what the streets was on but during this time you had to dig in the crates and i think you know respectfully i'm from the last generation where you had to dig in the crates. You had to go seek it out, right? Whether it was record stores, whatever, bodegas, what, you know what I'm saying? That type of thing. So, man, that's the first thing I think of is the different nasty corner stores where I had to go get them DVDs. So, yeah. <laughs> That's dope. I, for me, the first thing I think of is just the essence of battle rap in terms of like that street uh, gritty feel. You know what I'm saying? Like I think of like it, it's funny because like when I really, really became a fan of battle rap, it was right when like I started watching battle rap in 2011, 2012. But like when I really, really was like a fan fan was right when they brought back when they brought the smack volumes. Right. And you remember mm -hmm. the whole promotion behind that was like oh, we're yeah, taking it back to the, we're taking it back to the essence where it was just mm -hmm. rapping. You had your homeboys, you had whatever, but y'all just going in and y'all just rapping or whatever. And so when I so when I saw that, it made me even want to go back to the Smack DVDs even more because I'm like, well, let's see where all the greatness came from because you can't you can't tell today's story without going back into the past and seeing like where all this stuff stemmed from. Um, and you got a lot of classic verses here. This is back in the days where people came strapped with five, six, seven verses, or whatever. And it wasn't no traditional three round battle, three minute, three minute rounds. It's like, I'm gonna go in, you're gonna go in, whoever stops, stops, or whatever. 
right? And but it, was, with, it was like the confluence of like, where you had, because this is the era where still the lyricists ruled the day, like, yeah. you know, on the radio, mainstream, whatever, like these guys could really, really rap, like put words together and value being like lyricists, you see what I'm saying? So you had that, you had a thriving mixtape scene, yep. you had crazy like New York era, Philly, you know what I'm saying? Like it was very, it was still, it was regional to a point as well. And there was no real like, uh, this is the beginning of like the storylines, right? Like a lot of the verses I feel like we got, like they have a storyline attached to it. Back mm. in the day, it seemed like it was just battle set up. But like from DVD to DVD, you start to get a semblance of like, okay, there's a story, there's a culture going on, like there's energy here. You know what I'm saying? So for me, getting into it, it was like, okay, I watch battle rap. We've been fans since like the HBO, the Blaze Battle days. Mm -hmm. Like, I just like the, you know, the, the battling art, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, like we like the diss tracks, like that's just what it is. So really battle rap is just a diss track. Everybody's just going at each other, yeah. whatever. So, but, Nah, just I, I feel like man, like you, you you talk about like you talk about that energy, man, like and that's when shit matter. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing that lives on the DVD and in the barber shops forever. Like that's what it was like. It's like everything back then, whatever you was into. I don't know what it was about that era, bro. But me being a kid, like you know, 15, 16, whatever, whatever the age was, like I kind of felt like everything had a pressure attached to it like if you was playing ball back then like if you was nice at ball in the 2000s or like 2006 9 like all that like the way they was the way it was competitive and shit, still competitive now but it was like it was just a, a different, different hunger behind the culture at the time so battle rap kind of reflected that that's what i wanted to say yeah so, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to set this one off. You know what yes. I'm saying? I feel like this is a part of any Smack DVD highlight reel. Mm -hmm. At number five, I have none other than Party Artie's first verse, first round against Murder Mook. This was on Smack DVD 6, 2004. Man, oh man. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the essence, when you talk about the hunger, you know, the, the street feel, the aggression, the even, even, and then the first thing I think of is like, he has like a pseudo what's your life like. When I spark the Rugas, I can't lose like Parker Lewis. When I was in Rikers, you was in diapers. I was in ciphers, rhyming with lifers. You was at home. You not a boss. I pop bruise, I don't got a floss. I drop jewels like the Holocaust. I got tools like construction workers. And I want to see your boss, because I don't fuck with workers. To each his own. And then, and then I also just think of the fact that like, you're talking about just setting off a battle. Cause I feel like back in the day on Smack DVDs, if you had like the first, like if your first two verses was hot, more right. often than not, you stole the battle because you pretty much had the momentum from there. It wasn't until later where like you could actually get the crowd back on your side midway through the battle towards the end. So he really mm -hmm. has like one of the best opening verses out of anybody you can name in Smack DVD history. Um, and you're talking about just going against Mook, who at this time, younger, but at the same time, was still a well-known name on the streets, you know what I'm saying? And right. I just feel like that was like the first, like, that's one of the few times you can say, outside of maybe the Jay, Jay Mills battle, which we'll probably talk about later, that was one of the few times you seen Mook get punched in the mouth, like, like out the gate, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, classic, highlight, real verse. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to say about that before you get into your, oh, your fifth uh, spot? Man, that that's a that's a great battle, I think, to, uh, or just a great first to pick. You know, what I mean, in an opening round because you think about it, I think most of us went to that battle because Murder Move was who he was. Mm -hmm. So that that kind of started like for me, battle rap. A lot of times, it's like you may go to an event or go to a, a like a pay per view for like one battler, but then leave there talking about a whole other. You know what I'm saying? Like the way that party already was rapping. The way he opened that round, and then that those bars you talking about, man, like, nah, man, when you when you was in diapers, I was in Rikers, like, like you know what I'm saying, like rhyming with lifers, like it, it just it was tough, man. They're just a different type of conviction. So shout out to that battle for sure. Wow, that's a good one. Yeah, what you got at number five? How you gonna kick it off? Number five, number five, number five, number five. Um, for me, for me, I'm gonna go uh, T Rex third round versus Young Miles. Mm. Yeah, 
Mm. And like it just th- at this time, this was still when people wanted to be like like you still were battling to kind of get a deal and all that too. Like, yeah. That was what people were doing at the time, whatever. Right. But there started to be like this kind of this culture, like, and then the storyline that kind of followed it, right? So like the first real, I guess for a lot of people, or what a lot of people probably saw, the first storyline that a lot of us seen was what was going, whatever energy it was between Detroit and Harlem at the time. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? The T-Rex and murder movement, the shots. Back and forth, you know what I mean? Things of that nature, stuff like that. So I think that this battle was important as well. And this was a young, crazy, hung, like ridiculous rest, Rex. Like, like T Rex is one of the best all time. His style hasn't aged. Like it's always been in time capsule. But he's saying like this is. <laughs> They say Rex ain't retaliating the niggas. I'm a bomb threat. Look, I'm evacuating this nigga. I flow too crazy. I'm fascinating this nigga. Hit his punchline, come in the masturbating. This shit dip, wet dip, clip dip, spit dip. Make this nigga flip dip, throwing bows like Rick Dick. Smack him about my business. Sullivan for you niggas that don't know my government. Hammer's too hot. I gotta shoot it with oven mitts. DOT money add, yo. We the toughest click. My block got something to tell you niggas like. How do we. You know what I'm saying? We giving you flows, we giving you different work. Yep. Like, like, like let them spit it, throw bows like Riddick, smack on mm. my business. That's when you got that. Uh, uh, he's still here, have an exhibit pimp his ride. Look at this cute shit we do to his wheelchair, like mm. shit like that. Um, oh man, like I I don't know, man. It's just it's too much, man. I, yeah, I, classic I, classic Rex flow as well too. Like classic. he had like like I just remember him saying. You know what I'm saying? He 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 invented the world in terms of like knowing when to slow it down, speed it up, hop into different types of flows and stuff like that. And you could just right. see like like and it's and you could see his mind is just cal- calibrating verses and lines and stuff like that as he's rapping or whatever. But it's so like it's so like fluid to where like it's just like he's a rapping machine. He's saying smooth shit like uh they, you don't want to be the person they have to dig up to put back in the ground. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's just you know what I mean? Like, it's just yeah. too much, man. And then at the end, you know what I'm saying? Randy Sullivan, in case you don't know my government. Like, and then like, uh, hammer, like, hammer hot, and we gotta shoot him with other mitts. And my hood got something to say to you. So good thing. And the whole neighborhood says it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? This is like some of the first type of showmanship. Rex had it. Rex had like a certain energy, a certain stage presence. The battles that we're gonna mention kind of set the template for how a lot of people wanted to perform. You know what I'm saying? Just captivating, like the flows. This is what I, this is actually what I missed about the area. It's what it, doing this made me realize, like people really rapped back yeah. then. And yeah. sometimes Rex is not necessarily get, hitting you with a punchline. He's saying some cold shit, but yeah. he you he could really rap. Like he could really, really, really rap. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it's different, man. So I, I don't, I don't, man. I, I think, I think like battles like that, you know what I mean? The sagas that they had back and forth kind of really shaped this shit. So mm-hmm. I got that one as yeah. a to, to open up. Uh, yeah. That's a solid opener. That's a solid opener. And number four, um, you know, I think I think this is a, a classic verse just because um it's innovative. It's a transformative piece of just like how battlers can structure their bars. Uh, you know, there's other people that pioneer it, but I think that when you talk about just doing it at a high level and just have like being extremely effective with it mm-hmm. I- i'll get into it but i got iron solomon's first round against math on smack mm-hmm. dvd 13th uh 2007 i mean matthew little matthew you know what i'm saying <laughs> like like come on man like and then, and then and then it's just like one thing that i peeped early on is like okay he has like the the subject scheme that he does but what mm-hmm. i didn't peep was like towards the, the sec like the second half of the of his uh of his round he's still doing like math references and like schemes in between like he has like a little mc square scheme towards the answer like he intertwined like the whole math subject i'm the professor type like he pretty much did a round with scheme but it went over my head because i'm just like well he already landed a crazy haymaker after the the chemistry math was history joint because back in high school i smashed this chickadee to cut she cut science class to visit me we had the chemistry attracted physically taught a sex ed and woodshop now math is history 
A grown man's face isn't usually like this. He looks like Chris Brown having a puberty crisis. <laughs> and I'm Mike in his prime. You ain't even the top sequel. Sugar Shane versus Sweet and Low. We're not equal. So I'm like, okay, so all the other stuff is just clever math flips. But he's actually intertwining some really clever wordplay and like a, a like a elongated scheme for a round lift that I just don't think was really done back in the day. You know what I'm mm. saying? And I know now he's like, he's deemed as one of the best writers in battle rap history and stuff like that. But really looking back at it from that, from that time period, it's like, if you can have material and if you can have subject matter that is still like impressive to this day, that's a testament to how great it was then. One yeah. of the more premier style clashes you'll find on the Smack DVD. Cause Iron was coming from a whole different left field. Like he's from that hip hop cloth, but what he was bringing to the field at the time was just completely different. So that's why I have a number four. Man, that's great. That's a good number four, for sure. No, you're exactly right. It's one of those battles that gets better with time. Uh, my number four, my number four is going to be Enes's first round versus my son. Mm. Wow. You have to understand, if you was around, if you was outside back then, Philadelphia, New York City, however you want to view it now, I don't care. But at the time when I was growing up, when I was coming of age, high school, the Philadelphia cast was on our heels. You know what I mean? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. This a master without the chainsaw. You want to beef or you want to battle? Motherfucker, play ball. I'm from a back block. He sell crack rock. Catch him on line and put his brains on his laptop. <laughs> They was right there. State Prop was right there. Siegel was one of my favorite rappers. Uh, Freeway, Cass, like they have work. And then when when the Reed Dollars of the world and the, you know what I'm saying, the top class and all of them, everybody start rapping on the street, uh, the two raw for the streets and, and right. that, like, it just kind of changed everything. And uh, this was one of the battles that is a pillar of that era. You know what I'm saying? Like at the same time, like, man, we from the back block, we sell crack rock, catch them online and blow his brains through his laptop. laptop. Like, what? Like, cause we know Ness can rap. Right. But it's just to incorporate the incorporate the flows on top of the battle and aspect. And my son's first round is actually dope in the battle. That's another thing. Go back and watch that because he, he's in front of a Philly crowd. You know what I'm saying? They hear the root for uh bro, but nah, my son just turned in a dope round. Mm -hmm. And it's just like the way Ness was just calling everybody out, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bitch made New York niggas. Ooh, I hate y'all. Like, I'm gonna be honest. When he said that, when he said that line, bitch made New York niggas, ooh, I hate y'all. When he said that, it was like, like they was mad at Ness for like two years straight after that. That's why the DNA, <laughs> that's why the DNA's happened like that. Yeah, right. yeah. Polo was there, he'd tell you that he was one of the people born. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm not lying, it's a fact. Yeah. So I'm just saying like, uh, this was this was one of those battles. So uh, I feel like Enos, again, this is another person just stylistically. I, I'm starting to understand what I'm seeing about my list is that I do value people who, who keep their style, keep their uniqueness, their talent, things like that, you know, over time. And Enes is absolute legend. He's gonna be battling until he's in a wheelchair. And even when he's old and gray and out of retirement home, I feel oh, sorry for whoever meets him in the cafeteria because it's really a wrap. Like he's nice, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Ness for that. And that was, that was my, uh, number four and the funny thing that you mentioned was like just the timelessness of his flow and the way he raps we we literally was just at the trenches event we saw him go against dot and like the same like the same style the same flows is still effective and still like we still can feel the energy when he rap you know what i'm saying so it's just crazy that like this many amount of years later he's still performing at a high level and he mm -hmm. still is himself you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um but yeah great number four uh, at number three, you miss you mentioned Rex already. Now I gotta mention Rex. Uh, this is a classic battle. Um, one of my favorite battles, just because of just like the tension there. I'm going with Rex fifth round against Uncasa. Mm. Smack DVD eight oh four. I'm a, before I get into the actual round. This this battle actually started off rocky for Rex because if you remember. 
his first verse, Ancasa pretty much stopped the mid-verse and said, I heard Supposedly. this on the radio. Supposedly. What are you doing? I heard you on the radio. Like, here's what the Classic song. moment. I'm about to Classic say, he, Rex, Rex looked like a deer in the headlights. He was like, like, like right. it, it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So like the first couple rounds, Ancasa was on his hel- helmet. But the thing is like Rex, he had a little bit, he had longer rounds and stuff like that. But right. Ancasa was on his helmet the first two or three rounds. The tide turned in the fourth round. And then mm. it gets into the fifth round. The fifth round is where you get into the I died him back and forth, nigga, the back and the forth, nigga. They get into the back of the back of that. Come on, bro. It was time for war, nigga. No time to call niggas. See a hundred dudes surrounding y'all, niggas with rounds and raw triggers. All types of minds and gallons of war. Look what you got at me and with death, take your calendar off, nigga. See, I was built with the talent to off, niggas. You got your talent from talent, your talent is off, nigga. I'm sick of hearing all of this arrogant talk, nigga. You running like the meters on cabs in New York, nigga. I'm packing the four, nigga. Mac of the four, nigga, is actually your niggas. Man, look the beam is actually your niggas. I'm packing the Mac in the back of the act in the four, nigga. Bro, like crazy. Then and then like you said, the slick lines, landlord of the block. You know how many niggas I made move? Like he he like the slick lines that he had in there too. You know what I'm saying? Like the like I I like this round because not only does it showcase the uh incredible rapping that we mentioned before but also showcase the resiliency because like i told you before when you lose like the first round or two it's very hard to get like you know what i'm saying that momentum back or whatever like he could like like if if he had that fifth round it would have got rocky because like i said the first two rounds he's he's rhyming the he's rhyming your raps with you it looks crazy yeah, I'm about to say, and then you get into that fifth round. We have that classic verse, you know what I'm saying? And then the tide turn because then you get into the sixth round. On Costa, damn near want to stop rapping. He like, and he's, hey, a, he's done. He's <laughs> like he's he's like, this hey man, he's like, hey Rex, Rex got this, but but I so I sell mixtapes. They try to get into that music bag. They try to get into that. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm selling mixtapes though. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like like they try to they try to differentiate themselves from from the from the scene. But yeah, classic verse, um, classic lines. The, the flow pattern and the way he was able to keep that flow pattern for most of his verse is just ridiculous. And and that in that in that line packing the back of the back of the act that that still gets quoted today. And you're talking about this is in 04. You're talking right. about 04. That's damn near 20 years later. Classic right. verse. That's what I have in number three. What you got? It's fire, bro. It's fire. Number three. Man. Number three. Number three for me. Is gonna be Murder Mook's third versus uh serious joke. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna, we gonna, we gonna do that. There's too many, there's a lot of things that Murder Mook has to get credit for. You're not if we're gonna say, okay, he didn't innovate these things, because maybe right. people in some of his contemporaries are doing them as well. But I'd argue that a lot of them either weren't doing it as well, or Mook just had a certain spark about him that made it connect with people. Right, he does things in this round that, on a showmanship level, basic, fundamental showmanship level, right? I have to understand, right? The commercial break, mm-hmm. the commercial break, crazy. I gotta put another kid out of commission. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we gonna take a brief intermission because I just remembered I gotta handle some other business. Okay. All right. If y'all saw the last smack, y'all get my drift. Yeah. Them two dirty niggas from Detroit was just on my dick. Yep. See, I already done eight mile over on eight mile, and the other dude is 12 bars before what I'm going to say now. (laughs) The commercial break, bro. Like, when Mook did that, that to me, that's one of the, that's another, that's a moment right there. Like, that's, that's Jordan switching hands. Like, that's, that's that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like uh addressing you know, the audience and the camera, then going, okay, now I'm back to you. Like crazy. Like, I, I gotta get back to some other business. You know what I mean? Like uh, you know what I'm saying? Like them two dirty niggas from Detroit was just on my dick. I already eight mile over on eight mile and the other niggas twelve bars from what I'm gonna say now. Say now, crazy. Like what they not gonna say is how uh, how they live in my shadow and out of all them niggas who won that battle, they just gonna be a, a has been like Joe Hammond. I'm back to regular schedule, schedule programming, crazy. <laughs> Yeah. It's over. It's over. I mean that stuff like that. Like when you you talking about and, and, and again classic battle. Whoever you got is who you got. But right. you combine that, and then at the end of it, right? Because Mook he gets that off, and most it, most people in that moment it's like, and then maybe you just don't understand because he's he's doing like he's sometimes I feel like and watching these early uh, DVDs, it's like 
I don't think they understood how innovative a lot of this stuff would be. Right. You know what I mean? Because right after that, he launches to the end of that third round, which is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, he tried to rob me. Like, he said, they walk on me in the spot. Like, he, and I'll be walking a thin line with D.O.D. D -O -D at the top. top. You know, you're bashful either. He'll D with them shots. Like, what? Having so much family can't see in this box. You know what I mean? Like, he's saying stuff up to this part and he's building up to it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, uh, try to rob me in the spot. It's like Pac Man. Because all you're going to be seeing is that. Crazy. Not in this. The crowd participation, yeah. the way he ended it. Okay. Stop, look at his face. He thinking, why me in the shot? I dare you. Try to rob me in the spot. Okay, we turn him back, man. All he starts seeing is dot. Dot on his head. Dot on his heart. Dot on his leg. Dot on his cake. Dot on his dick. Like, if yeah, you face the black, like, that's what you call it, how to end a round, bro. That's how you do that. That's how you do that. So just levels of showmanship that I feel like. Uh, had an influence on this culture, plus just what he's saying, the confidence that Mook had, you know what I mean? And a lot of these battles, the confidence, that was the thing I feel like that resonated with people. You always felt like he had a chance, and for him to do that in that third round, I thought was dope. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's it for me. Yeah. It's crazy that you mentioned that at three, because I actually have that number two, and I don't even want to spend that much time on it because you pretty much echo all my sentiments. The one thing I will <laughs> say is that it does feel like when he's rapping that third round, it's a crescendo. Like the momentum is going upward each each line, like each mm -hmm. line. Then when you get to like that that uh, commercial break, and then he cuts into like his latter portion of his verse, and he's building up into that last haymaker that he lands or whatever. It, it just feels like a crescendo. One thing I will say is that, like, another thing that he made innovative, in my opinion, because I know a lot of people talk about third round knockouts, right? I know a lot of people say, well, you know, when Math battled Rex, I know Rex might have won the first two rounds, but Math ended so strong. Before that happened, you had Mook ending his, his like, battle so strong with that third round. Like you mentioned, you can debate whatever, but a lot of times people remember that third verse, and all you needed was that third verse. To, to win you a battle, you know what I'm saying? Like, so he ended so strongly the way it, it influenced and it, it affected the way people viewed the battle. So I think he's like one of the first people I can say like had a, a legit third round knockout. Even if you want to say the battle's debatable and all that, that third yeah. round is so strong to where a lot of people still feel like he won that battle. What is your runner up before we get into number one? Number two, number two, um, number two. Now, number two, number two is tough, man, because to me, there, there's this could be a one A one B situation, but whatever, 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 whatever. Charlie Clips, third round, Tay Rock, Lions Den, shout out to Lux, that era, mm -hmm. like that is one of those. Like you talk about third round knockout. It's the first time we hear about Grandma cooking. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I spend time in that hood ass booking. Throw a right in a good ass hooking. Can you picture me losing yeah. for that good ass cooking? For my grandmoms, I do time in that hood ass booking. Right. He want to fight, I throw a left, then a good ass hooking. Have him like, <laughs> you know when you used to get that good ass hooking? <laughs> from the Mickey Fax, from the Tiana Taylor classic yeah. work. I mean, just his command of the room, his command of the moment, like understanding how to incorporate humor, like street stuff. And, you know, like he can go from serious in one like setup in the bar to joking in the next part of it. I always thought that was an underrated quality of what Clips does, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like that's so, think about that. Like I, in my setup, I'm joking. And then by the end of it, I'm mad. And then I switch it, you know what I'm saying? Like Clips does that seamlessly. You know what I mean? And it's all throughout that verse. That's why it was so captivating. Now there is a there is a segment of our community that goes back and watches that battle just for Tay Rock's rounds. I'm not gonna lie. There I you know, despite whatever happened. But clips all time, I mean, I, I think that might have been the first viral like dorm room classic, you know what I mean, pre-YouTube like world star. Yo, you have to watch what he does to this man, this man. Mm. 
And now we're about to get into honorable mentions. So watch this clip really quick and we'll be right back to announce the number one spot. Still like a mill, cook my fast. Keep a sword off like woodshop class. Crook might blast, chrome to your cranium. Boom, turn his dome to a stadium. <laughs> Matter of fact, add another G to that, nigga. Double it up. It's a thousand to you, but to me, it's a couple of bucks. Hey, yo, big, am I trouble or what? I swear they had never hear artists with such colorful touch. They ask me how I speak stupid and I don't smoke, I don't know. But I goes off like a faux faux. That rose gold got a piece on it that let you know my ab life. See, the shit got feet on it. You need a water. You need a water. That's me, Jin, not you. Don't make me stop you. I can tell you, I be analyzing his rhymes. He said, words connect, words connect about six times. He was saying a whole bunch of shit just to make it rhyme. Yo. And at number one, um, I went on record. Like, I said this multiple times. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm, like, sometimes very critical of this guy because I feel like when, when he's at his best, he's, like, one of the greatest writers ever. Um... And I think it's like easily the most innovative, easily the most important performance in battle rap history. But if I have to choose a verse, I'm going with Lux's first round against Miles. Smacks mm. EBD 12, 07. You talk about innovation. You talk about chain punching. You talk about advancing lyricism. You talk about that performance, in my opinion, coined the term penmanship in battle rap. Um, and yeah. in my opinion, you're talking about the most maybe you can you can argue like what Mook did to a uh, young hot, but you're talking about the most dominant performance in Smack DVD history, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I just think Lux Lux <laughs> Lux first round is just so impeccable. Like letting that thing sing in the in the lobby, I be Aaron Halls. Catch hard feelings and slack up like high waters. The tides on you. I'm back for the side order. Try oh. on a man play make. I'm Vega with a pen. Slip dog get ripped more than Schwarzenegger in the gym. Shit, moms knew it long through a school and job my wrongdoings. What they duking and throwing the dukes ain't no being no you can. Oh. He's a dead guy running. His chest lodge pumping. His head drive punches and his left eye jump. You oh. at your side. My set gon' ride lies. Tell me. Gas prices had you petrol fired. I shot both sides when crossing. I run the route. I'm the king. Got coupons now. Cut it out. And I run the route. I call it a coupons and I cut it out. Like I just think that like the the slick wordplay mixed in with like the 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 chain punching and all that is just incredible. Um and and I just I I can't name that many verses I can like like say like from beginnings and has multiple quotables like crazy man. crazy what you got yo that you know what's crazy is one i didn't follow directions right now we talked about this in the backstage we're gonna let this rock for the people they gotta notice i didn't follow directions i was thinking just dvd classic i know you said smack but as i was doing this i got excited and all that good shit but we're gonna look crazy because we didn't do this list shit together right well, how do i got this same round mm. i got the same drum yeah. like like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's too much, man. It's just, it's too much, man. Like, I write my wrong dudes, die from the arm oh, through it. Like, what? Like, he was killing, like. All cylinders, though. Like, I'm talking, was, like, character assassination. Like, what you doing? And my mom's really calm to it. Like, come on, yeah. man. Like, <laughs> you know what this shit about? Son, it's the fling. You're going to even jump in the ring or get under the wing. Mm -hmm. Ain't sharing with the dogs. We got shit to clear them all. I'll mm -hmm. be in your lobby letting that thing sing. I'll be airing halls. Mm -hmm. Ostrich can't find through my ostrich. Got a job moving boxes. Mm -hmm. I push the trap grams. Put down that same hustle. Distribute rap jams. My disc get rap scanned. My lyrics backhand. More DVD niggas try to put me on a cam than a diplomat fan. <laughs> Like, miles. Got a job moving boxes. <laughs> job moving boxes. Can't find no monsters. Like, yeah. Oh, man. Miles in my pops crib. Yo, more more DVD people put me on the cam than the diplomat. Diplomat fan. Come on, man. It's just too much, man. And it got darker. That's the crazy part. It got very dark. <laughs> it got, it got very dark, man. Very, very dark. I'm not going to lie. Like, 
He's like, fist in your whole mouth. I'm there you I'm knocking these niggas cold, cold out. out. It's just like the way he says it on top of the stuff that he's saying, bro. Yeah. Like the, the way he's saying it on top of what he's saying. It's just like the pause is like, you just never knew when the line was going to be either finish or start yeah. or what or what it was going to connect to or what he was going to like rhyme with. so it's like you paying attention to every word because even the way he's saying it might mm. have a different meaning of meaning on top of it you know what i'm saying so it catches you late the thing that i think is crazy about that era mm. and dope about that era like at the same time it's like people let you rap mm. just did they did. Lux couldn't do this. The, the stuff he's saying here, he, this is a two hour, this is an hour long battle. <laughs> yeah. I ain't even count with Miles versus. Right, like, right. Y'all just, y'all not gonna let him do that. Y'all not gonna let him do none of this. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the Aaron Hall's line would have. But then, and then he had and then Chico, chain punching though. Just pop up. up, come on, man! Like back to back haymakers though. Like it's almost too it's almost too much to digest at one one point in time or whatever. And the crazy and another crazy thing about this is, I, I, you could argue that this is probably the best rap performance in Black Star history. I know you got like, wow. you, I know you got like JC and Chilla in Black Star. You got Ill Will's performance against. Uh, uh, Johnny Alcatraz mm-hmm. and Black Star, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That classic battle. But I in mean, terms of like the best, Ice 2, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man. I don't well, know. Yeah, I was lying. I was lying then. But no, but I'm just saying Black Star, oh, just general. In oh, general okay. Well, if, they, if we just talking about just in there, Ice made a person tag out and get his man's. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's crazy. crazy. That is crazy. That's that is insane. Crazy. Yeah. What? What is that? <laughs> nah, man. It's just, I mean, uh, so, but now nah, that's that's the greatest one though, because that put everything together, and yeah. I feel like if there's a, um, what do we compare it to, right? Like, I, I compare it to like ninety, like a, I like, compare it to like ninety three Jordan, like eighty six Bird, like like, I like it, like like you can like you like you can argue that like he's gotten better since that time, right? right. But when you're talking about like pure skill, right, hunger. Yeah. Just raw talent. That's yeah. that's the epitome of like, and that's and that's why we hold Lux to that standard. Because like, I know people talk about the the Calico performance, the mm-hmm. Hollow performance, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But we're talking about a guy who like innovated the game and then yeah. reset the game, like, right? Like at the same time too. Like, so I don't know of what was possible. What was yeah, possible with this battle rap shit. Like he's rapping better than whatever else was going on at the time. And then remember, this was up against the backdrop of the culture kind of shifting as well. Yeah. The undercurrent of like just really poppy type shit. It was less based on the lyricism. Yeah. Or if you was a good rapper, you had you got a good producer, you got good beats. All right, this person is a go because they nice. They stopped working like that at some point. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, nah, like we going with this person, whatever the case might be. But Lux is rapping clearly better than whoever else is doing it. But I just feel, I feel like this though. You know, um, if you talk about like moments, right? Like I, I try to use a basketball, you know what I'm saying? Or like, you know, different sports that I played or like what moment made you want to go play basketball? What thing made you want to go? I think for battlers, like when you interview the Tilla Jones of the world and JC and yeah. Danny Myers and so on and so forth, that great hoodie Lux. Absolutely. That is what everyone started to chase. And that's one battle. That's one battle. And that's three rounds that just, I feel like whoever became one of them, that was one of the battles they seen. Yeah. Has to be. Yeah. Yeah. So. But thank you for gracing this channel with your battle rap knowledge, with just, just the personal experiences and connections that you have with it. Because, you know, we don't have that many avid battle rap fans that remember what it was like listening to these verses for the first time you know what i'm saying and the og perspective in terms of just like seeing how battle rap has evolved and understanding like not just the battle rap uh atmosphere but the hip-hop atmosphere at the time and, mm-hmm. and how that influenced and imposed its will onto the battle rap atmosphere so i just want to thank you very much for gracing this channel yeah. and yeah That's see you guys definitely. soon any definitely. last words 
Oh yeah, no, I just want to say thank you for having me up here, man. I, I appreciate it, man, without a doubt. Appreciate you, you know what I'm saying? Um, definitely keeping the, you know, the conversation going for sure. I'm sure people are going to respond with their own personal top five or critique yards or whatever, but it's really all to make sure that the culture keeps going with the dialogue and things like that. So check into the old rhymes and stuff like that. And a lot of times it's not as far like some some of the stuff aged really well. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh and uh to the people that's young, yo, yo, know, just live longer. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Because you'll yeah. be sounding like me. So if I sound like an old dude to you, it's okay. Like, yeah. you, you'll be that way too. Yeah. But nah, but Thank you. I appreciate it. Tone Bro, Black Compass Media. Uh, shout out to the whole team. Shout out to the walk down as well. Bye here, man. I appreciate that. Thank Peace. you.